guys, welcome back to my channel. Thank you so much for watching. So today's video is going to be a review roundup. I have a few products here, some skincare and some makeup products that I have been testing out for the past couple of weeks or so and I just wanted to share my thoughts. Some of them I have just really been loving and then some of them I just haven't heard anyone talk about and I just feel like it's my duty to tell you about them so if you guys are interested in hearing what I have to say about a few products that I have been testing out lately definitely just keep watching I just filmed another video and I did mention this but since I think this one's going to be going up first I just look directly into my light why did I do that I'm not wearing my engagement ring because it's being cleaned so don't come for me so that's the reason behind that I just know that someone's gonna comment on it and I just don't want to hear it so I miss it too, okay? If you see me looking down at all, I do have my notes written out for myself because um, I am a very scatterbrained person and I tend to forget things. So, let's begin. So the first product that I wanna to talk to you guys about comes from the Ulta Beauty brand. This is the Ulta Beauty Twisted Volume Maximum Performance Mascara. So this retails for $10.50 on the Ulta Beauty website, which isn't the cheapest, drugstore option, but it's also, of course, not the most expensive option out there. What I really like about the Ulta Beauty brand is they are always running sales. Right now on their website, it's buy two, get two free from the Ulta Beauty brand. So technically, I could buy four of these mascaras for the price of two. I'm not going to do that because mascaras have a shelf life, but just saying, you could do that if you wanted to. What I really enjoy about this mascara is how versatile it is. So it is one of those mascaras where you can twist it to get the amount of volume that you're looking for. So for example, if you're on the first setting, you're going to get the least amount of volume as opposed to when you're on the fourth setting, you're going to get a ton of volume. I like mine on the fourth setting just because I do really like having a lot of volume in my lashes. This is the size of the wand, which I think is a pretty good size. It is a rubber wand. And it's a big brush, but it's not so big that I poke myself in the eye, because I, I do do that with some mascaras. I really just love how black this is. It makes my lashes very dramatic. I am wearing it today with a more dramatic look, and I feel like I was able to forego falsies because I feel like this really does give me the drama that I'm looking for. But I like that I can also tone it down if I want to, like if I'm going to work and don't want to look like I'm wearing lashes, I can just put it on the first or second setting and it's perfectly acceptable at the workplace, except I have also worn it on the fourth setting at work, but that's neither here nor there. Um, I also really like this because it doesn't flake on me. So I have a problem with mascara smudging on me a lot, especially if I'm wearing it on my lower lashes. I like to wear mascara on my lower lashes. It's just something that I enjoy doing. Some people don't, but I really do. Um, this does not transfer onto my under eye. It doesn't interfere with my concealer or the powder that I put under there. So I really like that about it. And I am just an all-around fan of this. I really haven't heard anyone talking about this. I think I may have heard Sarah Rose mention it, but I think she dropped it on the floor and got cat hair on it. So she couldn't continue testing it. But I am here to confirm that this is a great mascara. And I do highly recommend it. Um, and for the price tag of $10.50, honestly, you really can't go wrong, especially when you can more than likely get it on sale, maybe free. Since we're talking about mascara, let's go ahead and talk about an eye makeup remover. So this is from First Aid Beauty, one of my favorite brands. This is their Pure Skin Conditioning Eye Makeup Remover. It's oil-free. Ophthalmology. Ophthalmology. Test oh God, why did I even try? It says it's safe for sensitive skin. This retails for $18, which I think is a pretty reasonable price. You get four fluid ounces of product in here. It's a shake well, and before cleansing, saturate a cotton pad and hold it over the closed eye for three to five seconds before wiping. Sweep across lashes, lids, and brows to lift off any residual makeup. Follow with your normal cleanser. So I have been using this for the past two weeks, and I do have some pretty concrete thoughts on it. First, I really like the packaging. I like that it kind of has this little squirt cap. That's not the right word. It has this little like squirt cap, so you just kind of squirt it onto a cotton round. That's what I do. I just squirt it right onto a cotton round. And I do what they say, put it on my eye for like three seconds, then I start rubbing and I eventually take my makeup off. What I really like about this is it doesn't leave an oily residue. So that is huge for me with makeup remover. If it leaves any kind of residue on my skin, I'm not a fan and I will not want to reach for it. 
This one doesn't, which I think is awesome. Um, it is oil free, so it makes sense. But I think that's awesome, especially for sensitive skin. I feel like I feel like this really is not very irritating to my skin. The one thing that I will say, and this was user error. <laughs> sometimes I like to like. I don't know how to explain this. I can't wink. Okay, let's just put that out there. I can't wink. So if I'm trying to remove makeup on one eye, but also look in the mirror, so I have this eye open. This eye is still kind of open, but I'm like holding it closed. I can't physically keep it closed. <laughs> okay, so if this gets in your eye, it hurts. But like you're not supposed to get it in your eyes. So, you know, just don't get it in your eye. That's really the only tip that I have. Um, it doesn't have a fragrance. It's really, it hasn't irritated my skin at all. I haven't broken out at all from it. Um, I've, my skin's been going through it with something else lately, but it has not been this. And I do feel like it is conditioning. It leaves my skin feeling not oily, not dried out, just very like normal. It's very like balanced, you know? It's balanced. It's not too oily, but it's not too dry. It's just right in the middle. I did want to mention that I received this free from Octoly and First Aid Beauty. I love when I get to work with First Aid Beauty and Octoly because this is just one of my all-time favorite brands and when their products pop up in my free store, I get over the moon excited. You should see like my proposal messages to the brand. I'm like, hi, it's me, please, like, I love you guys. So really thankful to them for letting me try this out and yeah, you can purchase this from Ulta. Pretty sure you can also get it from Sephora and the First ABD website, but $18, I don't think that's bad at all. Next, let's talk about something else for the skin, but um, it's kind of like bridging the gap between makeup and skincare. This is the Kula um, SPF 30 Mineral Sunscreen. It is the Cucumber Matte Finish. So let me be the first to admit that I have not always applied sunscreen to my face. I have been really bad with that in the past. Actually, this summer, so bad, is the first summer where I have been applying an SPF every single day. And I know that you should apply it year-round. I know that it shouldn't just be summer, but yeah. Feels good to get that off my chest. Um, but I decided to try out the Kula brand because they are a cruelty-free sun care brand and I wanted to buy something more drugstore price but I couldn't find any at my local drugstores so if you guys have any recommendations for some really good affordable sunscreens that can be found at like CVS, Walgreens, stores like that not Ulta because Ulta isn't very close to me let me know so anyway this is a mattifying sunscreen which I don't typically need something to mattify my skin but it is nice in the summertime because I am a little bit more uh, let's say dewy I'm a little bit more dewy in the summertime so it is really nice to have something mattifying underneath my foundation and even if I want to go in with a luminizing primer it's still nice to know that this is the first layer on my skin and it's going to keep my oils at bay this does smell like cucumber it smells very nice. Um, I per personally really like that scent. If you don't like cucumbers, you wouldn't like it because it is quite fragrant. I, <sighs> the one thing that I don't like about this, and I think it's because it's a mineral sunscreen, correct me if I'm wrong because I am a sunscreen noob, but um, I'm pretty sure it's because it's a mineral sunscreen. This leaves a hella white cast on my face. <laughs> Um, so I can't wear this by itself. If I wear this by itself, I need to put like a BB cream over it or something. I've been using, um, it's by Bare Minerals, it's like their tinted BB cream. I've been using that over this. Um, if I'm like doing like a no makeup makeup kind of day, or I just put this under my makeup and I put a full coverage foundation on top and it's fine. Um, I'm, and I'm not typically in flash photography, so I don't know if this has a flashback. I would assume that it would because it really is quite white on your skin. It is very detectable if you don't have something over it. I like this a lot because it hasn't broken me out at all. Um, when I go on vacation and put sunscreen on to go to the beach, Typically, I'm using whatever my parents have. So like beach bomb, let's say. And if I put that on my face, my face is not like that. My face will break out. This has, does not break, this, this does not break out my skin. It actually, it feels very like soothing and nourishing when I put it on. 
And like I said, my skin has not had any adverse reactions to it. Like I said before, my skin is breaking out from a foundation at the moment. This particular item has not given me any issues. I really also really like the packaging. I like that it's in a squeezy tube. I like how travel friendly it is. I brought this on my cruise with me. It was really great to have and it's really quite smoothing. Um, think of like a smoothing primer. Not silicone though because it doesn't feel like silicone. It's kind of like if you merge a silicone primer with a moisturizer, that's kind of the texture that you get, but this doesn't have silicone in it. It's a sunscreen, it doesn't have silicone in it. Um, it has titanium dioxide and zinc oxide, so if you are sensitive to those ingredients, you probably don't want to try this because it might uh, irritate you. This is on the expensive side. It does retail for $36, which is, again, why I really want to try something a little bit more affordable because to be repurchasing this over and over again, would be quite expensive and I'm not really looking to spend that much money on an SPF. I know that it is a very important step in my skincare routine, but um, if I could save a little bit of money, I would. But I do overall recommend it. I think it's a nice option, a nice high-end option. And I, I mean, I do think it works, you know? I My face didn't burn when I was on my cruise, so that's a plus, right? I'm gonna talk about primer now and then I'm going to finish with a foundation. So the primer that I want to review for you guys is the CoverGirl True Blend Base Business Skin Primer. This is the pore minimizing version. So this comes in the purple packaging. They have a bunch of different primers in this line like hydrating, smoothing, I'm not really sure what else, redness reducing, um, but this is the pore minimizing. So it does come out a purple color this very nice light purple and it is a very smooth formula so I want you to think of more so a moisturizer than like a silicone primer even though it is pore minimizing and when I think of pore minimizing I don't know about you guys but when I think of pore minute minimizing primers I think of silicone I think of that traditional silicone feeling like the traditional smashbox photo finish primer you get what I'm saying this doesn't feel like that. that. This feels more like if you have ever used the Touch and Soul primer, the No Pore Blend primer, that is what this feels like. It's so smoothing and it just feels really, really nice on the skin. I will say this doesn't do a whole lot for my pores, but I have rather large pores. I blame 16 year old Jamie who thought she could sleep in her makeup for like days on end. <laughs> Girl, wash your face. This retails for $11.99, which isn't the cheapest option at the drugstore, but it's certainly not the most expensive. I think that it is a nice price for the amount that you're getting. You're getting one fluid ounce here. It does say on the back that it visibly reduces and blurs pores while mattifying shine, creates a perfect canvas for foundation, and it has a long-lasting weightless feel. I totally agree that it feels weightless. If I wear this on its own, it doesn't feel like I have anything on my skin. Once it kind of sets into the skin, it's very undetectable. It doesn't leave a purple cast on your skin or anything like that. It does blend into a transparent primer. <laughs> Like I said, I don't think it does much for my pores, but maybe if you have smaller pores or less to fill in, it might do a lot for you. It just, it doesn't do the most for me. I have other primers that fill in my pores more than this one, but I still really do enjoy it. I think it's a really nice option from the drugstore. And if you are looking to try the Touch and Soul primer, the No Pore Blend Primer from Touch and Soul, I would recommend trying this if you didn't want to spend the money. I think that one's like, it's not even that expensive. I think it's like $20. This is $11.99. But if you still wanted to save those $8, I would definitely recommend checking this out because the textures feel very, very similar to me and I feel like the effect on my skin is the same between them. So highly recommend this one from CoverGirl. I'm so happy that I'm able to recommend something from CoverGirl now that they're cruelty free. And uh, we're just, you know, all about supporting that energy over here on my channel. So. Lastly, I want to review the newest foundation to my collection. So this is by Smashbox. This is their Studio Skin 15 Hour Wear Hydrating Foundation. So I have mine in the shade 1.1. I will go ahead and say that this isn't my perfect shade match. It's a bit too dark for me when I don't have a tan. When I have a tan, this actually works quite nicely for me. 
um, but when I zone up its hand, it's a little too dark. I did pick my shade online, and they do have a whole bunch of shades and undertones to choose from, which I think is incredible, but it was a little difficult to find my shade. It resells for $36, which is a bit on the pricey side, but it's not as expensive as a lot of high-end foundations. It's not anywhere near like a luxury price tag. What I really like about this is how it is very skin-like. So it is a super lightweight, weightless, undetectable on the skin foundation. It is quite luminous. I do agree with that claim. Um, it's not so much that it provides like this really intense glow, but it just provides this really nice, healthy luminosity to the skin. You just look very healthy and youthful. It doesn't have the highest coverage. I would say it's like a low medium coverage, but it is very buildable. I like to apply this with a beauty sponge and I will just kind of build it up in the areas that I need a bit more coverage, which is typically my chin, my cheeks, and my nose. The one thing that I will say about this foundation is I don't think that I really agree with the 15 hour wear claim. The foundation wears away quite gracefully. Um, it's not a very splotchy foundation. I have some foundations that, you know, when they start to break down throughout the day, I gotta wash my face immediately. And if I'm at work, I'm like embarrassed because it just, it starts to look really like cakey and dry and splotchy and it's like on this cheek but not this cheek. This one wears away very evenly, very gracefully. Since it's not a mattifying foundation, my oils do come through um, since it does have that luminous finish. My oils come through through throughout the day, but it still looks very like natural the way that it wears away, um, and I don't think that it would be noticeable to anyone if you didn't point it out. I just, I wouldn't recommend wearing this for like, you know, if you're gonna be at a party from 11 a.m. till 9 p.m. outside on a boat sweating in 90 degree heat. I wouldn't recommend this for that, but I do think this is going to be a really nice option come winter time because my skin will be a lot more dry and it will be really nice for my oils to kind of break through and peek through throughout the day. Overall, I do think this is a really nice option if you're looking for a new high-end foundation to try. Like I said, they have a whole bunch of different shades and undertones, and I had been wanting to try this for a while because I know that a lot of people really do enjoy this foundation, and I'm really happy that I decided to try it. Is it my most reached for? No just because on a day-to-day -day basis, I do need something that's going to be a bit more full coverage and a bit more long-lasting. But if I'm just going for a very like light makeup day, I really do like reaching for this one because again, it just looks really natural and really pretty and just kind of evens out the skin tone. So, highly recommend this one from Smashbox if you were interested in it. I definitely think that giving it a try wouldn't hurt especially if you could get it on sale during the Ulta 20% off or the Sephora VIB sale or something. And after those five reviews, that is going to wrap up today's video. I hope that you enjoyed. I really have never done a review roundup style video, so if you have any feedback for me, I would really appreciate if you would leave it in the comments down below. I love watching this type of content on other creators' channels, and I really for a long time have wanted to do it on my own. I feel like in this video I was a little all over the place. I tried to make notes but I felt funny looking down so I didn't really read them. So it still might have been all over the place. So I am quite sorry if it was but if you stayed to the end I do thank you so much. If you're not subscribed already I do hope that you will subscribe. I would really love to see you guys back here and I will catch you in tomorrow's video. Bye!